I didn't know, when I saw the first exhibit, I didn't realize uh, that I still had kept any of this stuff because I would do things and then put them in a box or a drawer and uh, I think Ron and Jenny went to, back to my home in Burbank and they found things from my school, they found things that uh, was more sort of an archaeological dig in finding things than it was uh, sort of my expertise at keeping things. So, I mean, they, they, they found things, uh, notes from school, uh, rejection slips from Disney, things that I'd long forgotten about uh, that, 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 that uh, was quite amazing. Yes, I mean, that's, as you can tell, I don't speak very well. And uh, that was, it was something that for me was always my form of communication. It was a way for me to, um, you know, kind of explore my subconscious, get ideas out without really speaking. And uh, it wasn't until that I had you know, became a director where I had to learn how to start speaking to people. But for me, drawings were always a way to, I felt most comfortable in terms of exploring ideas and, and things, uh, you know. Ideas always felt more comfortable coming more from the subconscious than they did sort of from, from an intellectual point of view. So that's always been important for me. Well, I went to CalArts, which was a school that was formed by Disney, actually, um, because uh, a lot of the old animators had, you know, getting older and, and they, they had they realized they hadn't actually been training new people so I did get a fairly you know uh, extensive history of art they, they studied different forms of art there was film music painting dance so you, you got little you know um, feet flavors of all of that but I think for me the, the best teachers I ever had were ones that sort of uh, made you uh, try to see you for who you were. I mean, because I, I think a lot of, when you're a child, you draw and you get to an age and you think that you can't draw and you're not good, you're not very proficient. And the ones that really said, just just draw what you feel and draw what you, what you can. And it, it became almost a bit of a mind-blowing experience for me because I just thought, I got very frustrated. And then one day I just said, well, just draw however I feel, and uh, that, that changed my life. And so there was a few teachers that helped support that, that were, I was always very grateful for. Well, again, I think a lot of it had to do with growing up in a certain culture, a very suburban kind of conformist society where, where I, 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 you know, was looking for things because I didn't feel that way, and I think you know, things like horror movies, monster movies, surrealist things were, were pretty much felt normal to me. So that, those are the kinds of things that I, 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 you're always sort of you know, you're trying to find things that, that, that are meaningful to you and, and the way you feel. So those are the kind of things that I, I was always in search of uh, because that's the way I felt inside. Well, again, I, I, you know, th those kind of movies help sort of shape me and, and you know, I always felt with monsters that they were they were the most actually emotional characters in those films, and and so always that that idea of perception and uh, you know I, I grew up feeling you know sort of people looking at you like you're some kind of monster, and uh, so I always related to those characters, whether it's Frankenstein or King Kong or Creature from the Black Lagoon. Most monsters have that sort of. Uh, symbol of misperception and, and actually being, you know, not what they seem. And, and so for me, those were always very strong emotional symbols for, for the way I, I felt. No, I know. Well, I mean, I think the amazing thing is, and I think you'd have to ask them, but uh, I, I think the art world was a little uh, rude, perhaps, is the best way of putting it. But but I think for people that went to the show, uh, it was, it, like I said, the best compliment I got was, you, you know, it wasn't necessarily presented as great art. It was sort of presented as kind of uh, somebody's thought process and somebody's, you know, and, and, you know, like I said, kids coming up and thinking, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And it, I think it got people uh, that maybe thought that they couldn't draw or couldn't create things that it made them feel... Uh, like maybe they could, and, and so I think it inspired people that, again, wouldn't ordinarily go to a museum, and, and that to me was the best compliment and, and, and the best thing about the show. 
Well, that's the interesting thing. A lot of the show, like, there was a lot of projects that were ideas that never manifested themselves into real projects. Some of them did. Some of them kind of started out as one idea and then sort of mutated <coughs> to another idea. So, again, I think what it does is it just sort of shows a process how you may be thinking about something, but it kind of leads into sort of an organic journey into something else. And so, I, you know, a lot of things maybe just started out as weird drawings and, and that I might apply them to a film many years later or a project many years later. So, uh, and, I, and there was a certain time at Disney where I, I had a lot of time just to, they let me draw whatever I wanted to draw, which was a very sort of fertile time for me where uh, they sort of locked me in a room and let me draw whatever I wanted to. So that was a very you know, good and inspirational time for me. Yeah, you know, I mean, I grew up in Los Angeles, and that's, you know, it's my home, but I, um, you know, it's, it, there's things about it that, first of all, it's too much of a business, you know, Hollywood is a very sort of insular place, and it kind of, you kind of lose perspective on the rest of the world, and uh, also I like weather, and I like walking. I mean, if you walk in Los Angeles, the police stop you and go, what are you doing? You know, it's like, I'm just walking, is that okay? You know, so there were lots of things about it that, that made me want to leave. And I, and I think there was a very funny feeling I had growing up where I felt the, the culture made me feel like I was some kind of alien or foreigner. So actually, when I moved to a foreign country, and was actually a foreigner, I felt much more at home. So it's a sort of strange dynamic that, that made me feel more comfortable living in, a, in another place. Well, again, I think for me, not being a very verbal person, uh, you know, I think everybody needs a release, whether, you know, through sports or music or writing or whatever. And for me, it was this. And I think everybody needs to be able to unleash their, you know, joy, sorrow, light, dark, you know, I think it's, it's important for every person to, to, to be able to express themselves in any way, shape, or form. And so for me, that was it. And, and, and like I said, you can't keep that's those kind of feelings bottled up. And, and so I always recommend to anybody, in whatever form, you, you know, to just be able to, to, to create, whether you, you know, do it for a living or for your own self, uh, it's, it's such an important thing to do. Well, yes, definitely. Obviously, he's one of, one of the great filmmakers, and, um, you know, any great film, loving film, you, you know, there's certain people like that that, that are just so inspiring, and, uh, and, and you know, for me, I, 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 those were kind of references that sort of came about because... Uh, I don't know, they just seem to fit. And, and you know, the idea of, you know, the, the chocolate bar looking like the orb from, from uh, you know, 2001 just seemed sort of a natural fit, you know. And so I, 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 was, and I, I was lucky because they were very, his estate was very nice and very generous about, about us letting us use those, inf you know, references and all. Uh, but yeah, no, amazing filmmaker, and uh, uh, and I wish I'd seen that exhibition here because I heard it was amazing. Because the press is just so horrible to me. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. And I, I just, it's funny. I, I just felt like um, since I live there, uh, and I have children, I just didn't want them to read how what a horrible artist I was. <laughs> so, so I just felt like. Uh, it was just a place where I didn't want to, you know, I just didn't feel appropriate to go there. Well, I mean, it's funny, I have a funny relationship with Disney because I've been sort of hired and fired about five different times. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we just have a funny relationship. Uh, but I, I'm very grateful, and I think everybody should be grateful that none of my drawings from Fox and the Hound are in this exhibition because they were horrible. I mean, they looked like they'd been hit by a car, some of them. And uh, so, I, but again, it was a very special time for me. I, 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 I guess kind of in a room where I got to, for at least about a year or maybe a bit longer, 
uh, just draw things and I mean that's when sort of things like Nightmare Before Christmas came up and you know I got the chance to do Vincent as a short film and Frank and me as a short film so you know I, I, I you know it's anything in your life you always have kind of a a love-hate relationship with it uh, but but they've been very great I mean in this particular case the opportunity to do uh, you know, a stop motion film in black and white, uh, you know, is, is very special, so I'm very grateful for that. Well, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right about that because the fact is, most kids, I remember, I remember when we did Nightmare Before Christmas, the student was very worried, it's too scary for kids, and I've had that happen from the beginning of my career. And the thing is, you talk to most kids and they, they, they love it, and it's just an interesting dynamic as, as people get older. They, they get they get more afraid, and I always felt kids are the best judges of what they can take or not take. I mean, that's what fairy tales are, and folk tales have been around long before cinema. And they've you know, fairy tales are basically horror stories. And I think it's just always for me, it's always been a way for children to sort of get in a, in a symbolic and slightly abstract way start to understand the world and start to understand things and. It's, it's interesting, because even if you look at Disney films, the, the best things in them are the scariest moments, and that's been happening from the beginning, from Snow White onwards. So uh, I just find that adults forget that as they go on, and it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing to forget, because it's such an important part of childhood. Well, I mean, I think there's always been that, and I, you know, I mean, I've done movies where, you know, they, they, they do like to pick things that they think are commercial, although that's always a kind of an absurd notion, because, you know, that's part of the beauty of, of film, is that you never know what it's, you know, the movie can be successful or not successful, so I've never really thought too much about that, and always, even if I'm working on a perceived big commercial movie, uh, I never know, you know, it, it, and, and I always try to again treat it personally and, and never really think too much about that because I think it's a bit of a false kind of form of thinking because if they knew that then every movie would be successful and luckily every year there's films that surprise people that nobody thought would be successful so that's always a good thing, you know, when, when, when it kind of shocks the system and, and, and something surprises them, which, you know, usually every year there is something that does that. Oh, you mean one f of, that I've made? Ooh, oh. Yes, one of... Uh, uh, when they you always say, you know, people have said that films are like your children, so it's hard to pick <laughs> one child over the other, because the others would be quite upset. Um, I don't know. I have I have mo I have bits of every of lots of films that I I, I love. I guess, I guess probably the most probably personal would probably be Scissor Hands is probably one. I love I love Ed Wood. I love I don't know. I, there's aspects of, of films that a lot of them that I, that I feel very close to. But uh, it's also it's hard for me. I never really watch them. I don't. I I I, I feel quite exposed looking at uh, my films. I think. Maybe because I've had to go through too many of these test market screenings that studios do that just, I can't, it makes me uh, traumatized. So I, I, I don't really go back and look at them very much, but, but, but I, I'd say probably that is the most probably personal in, in a way. No, I don't think so, because I think that the five minutes was very good. That was a very, that, 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 that told the story in the, in the, proper amount of, 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 of time. But it was an interesting story with that one because that was the first time I got, and that, you know, it's a short film, and uh, uh, I remember this, the studio note was, well, have them get up at the end and go outside and play. You know, I was like, well, they just completely missed the whole point of the story, and uh, you know, it's been kind of going on that way ever since. But I think that one was the one where it's just the right time and, and uh, you know, Frank and me is a different story because I always wanted to do it in stop motion and so, you know, and create different characters to go along with it. So, you know, the, the, even though it was based on that old short, you know, there's lots of new characters and elements involved in it. Well, I mean, usually if it answers correctly, um, the drawing for me, it was always like, for instance, I would never think about things. I, I would never say, I'm going to draw this. 
oftentimes the drawing just comes, uh, that's where the, 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 the character from Nightmare Before Christmas came, just drawings, and, and, and then after drawing it several times, that's when you start to think about it, and, and so for me, it's never an intellectual idea, it was always more of an emotional idea, which is something I felt much more comfortable in terms of uh, it, it feeling more personal, rather than sometimes the intellectual mind that plays tricks on itself, and, and for me, uh, something just coming from a drawing or something simple like that felt much more real to me. No, I mean, I always listen to music with projects. Um, they don't necessarily always end up in the film, but, you know, sometimes I find inspirational things that, that, that that's, you know, you know, I remember, like, a long time ago when I was, did Batman, I mean, I would listen to Pink Floyd's The Wall every morning going into work and back. Now, that doesn't have necessarily a direct link, but there was something about it that, Thematically, uh, it was something that was important to me. So I, there are things when you when you are working that uh, that, 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 that you know and, and but, you know the only time I've really done that is like on Sweeney Todd, which I really enjoyed because it was like kind of like making a silent film. We had music on the set the whole time, and, and so it would affect the actors' movements, and it was it was quite fun and beautiful to do. And so it kind of got me into the thinking like, well, sometimes it's fun to just play music on the set, just because it, it, if you're not dealing with dialogue, it, the actors kind of feel it and move with it and, and it creates a different environment, which is quite, quite interesting. Well, I mean, I've had, you know, I, I've... Lots of reasons. I mean, I've been very lucky to work with a lot of great French artists, uh, you know, uh, cameramen, actors, and I've had some amazing experiences, say, at the Cannes Film Festival, and I felt very... Uh, very welcome here in some ways, and, and so for me, it's, it's a place where, and also they just appreciate cinema so much. I mean, I remember going to the original Cinematheque and, and just seeing lots of things from old films, and I, I just, it, it, you know, you really appreciate it. And I, and I remember even, you know, even if they don't like your film here, they talk so well about, you know, it sounds so beautiful, and it sounds like, you, you know people are thinking about it, and again, Growing up in, in, in California, where it's much more of a, say, a business, uh, the film business, it's a real pleasure to come to where you really sense that people enjoy cinema, enjoy film for, for, for the art of it. And, and so I've always appreciated that, and, and it's always been special to me for, for that reason. Well, Ray Harryhausen obviously was a major influence to me. I mean, I, I, I grew up watching his films, and, and he was just somebody who, um, you know, you could tell was an artist. I mean, the way he made his characters move, he always gave it emotion, and, and you know, very singular artist. And I, I, I knew his name before even I knew directors' or actors' names. And uh, I, I, I think it, there was just something about his films and the stop motion and, and, and all that were just very, very powerful. And again, like a dream, sort of stayed with you forever. And, and uh, I, I met him recently. He's, he's in his 80s now. Uh, but again, an amazing artist. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just more sad that he hasn't been making movies because he's still quite a vital artist. And, uh, you know, as technology moved on, uh, I think he got sort of sort of sidelined, which is very unfortunate because I think as, a, as an artist he still had so much and has so much to offer, but uh, like I said, probably one of my major influences. I mean, when you see those skeletons in like Nate Jason and the Argonauts, I mean, it was, I can, I can almost still remember the feeling of them the first time I saw it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it sort of, uh, I mean, I wasn't a very good student, so but I did like drawing and I did like making little short films and things. So, yeah, I mean, it keeps. It's good to keep busy. Otherwise, you know, you just fall into a deep depression. It just kind of keeps you know your hands busy. And I, I think it's important to always, you know, I think I think the, the most important part of any day is just having quiet time to think. I mean, which is hard and the modern world to kind of, with so much going on and so much wonderful technology, 
um, that it's, you know, it's important to just have the time to just think and dream and draw or write, you know, what, whatever. For me, that's, that's, that's when you get the most work done. Well, I do, I, I do basically have final cut. And I, I, you know, I mean, I think I've, I've I, I realized very early on, you know, yeah, I thought I, after a couple of successes, I thought, oh, well, you know, it's going to be easy to get movies done, you know, I, I, Beetlejuice was successful, Batman was successful, but then the hardest film to ever get made for me was Edward Scissorhands, so I realized quite early on that every film is a struggle, which I, it's, it's a good thing in a way, I mean, it, it should be... Uh, something that is is not easy to do, and, and, and therefore uh, is something that, that that each one, I have to say, yeah, has been quite difficult to get done. I mean, they they. Uh, I think once you get labeled kind of a, a weirdo, no matter how successful you get, they still think they still think something's wrong with you on some level. You know, they still question. You know, like is he going to do something crazy or? out there and you know I always felt quite normal so I, I never quite understand their 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 take on me but but I, you know once I learned the fact that each project is difficult it, I, 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 I got much more philosophical about it and, and uh, you know accepting of it.